Okay, so let's take a look at how to do some percent compositions and chemical uh, formulas in terms of empirical formulas and molecular formulas. Percent composition is just taking a look at how to uh, analyze what part of the whole is a certain element. So mass percent of an element, you're going to do that in grams or whatever. One of the easiest ways to do it is to take, combine uh, magnesium and oxygen in this example. All told, if we add up, we have 8.20 grams of magnesium and 5.40 grams of oxygen. So all told, this thing is going to weigh 13.60 grams. Now all we have to do is take the part of this. So uh, let's divide our magnesium, 8.20, divided by the whole of 13.60. Just find out what percent that is. So you just divide, multiply by 100%, and that's your percent composition. Now, if you want to find the percent composition of oxygen, you can take your 5.4 divided by 13.6, or you can simply subtract uh, your magnesium percent by 100 uh, from 100, and you're going to end up with that percent as well. They might not add up to a completely 100% because of rounding. It might end up being 99.9% uh, .9 or something like that. Don't worry about those. Um, that's just because of the rounding. Now, another way we can take a look at percent composition is just if we know what the compound is. We don't know specific amounts. So here we have the compound propane, C3HA. Here we do a formula mass. Carbon is 12, so that's 36. Here we have eight hydrogens, mass of one, so that's eight. So all told, propane, one mole of the propane will weigh 44 grams. Then we simply say, okay, 36 divided by 44, that'll give us our percent composition of carbon. Okay, so you just kind of do the same thing we saw before. We just didn't know the specific amount of propane. Pretty simple. Now, if we see that we have uh, propane again, we knew that that had a um, molecular mass of 44 grams per mole. And what if we had 82 grams of the compound? Well, remember that our carbon was 36 grams. So if we divide that and get our percent, then we multiply that percent times 82. So it's just one more step figuring out specifically. So we said that carbon was 81.8%, and then we just multiply that percent times 82. We're going to end up with 67.1 grams total. So pretty simple, just kind of keep your head about you. We're doing part divided by the whole, and that's it. Now, an empirical formula is the, the reduced formula of the compound. We don't know the identity of the compound. We want to know its simplest form. So C2H8, its empirical formula would be CH4. Now, sometimes, like carbon dioxide, that compound is already reduced. Um, it exists as just CO2. So the empirical formula could also be um, the actual formula. So how do we do a problem like that? Well, if we have a, a compound, if we know the percent composition of the compound already, um, one of the easiest ways is just to assume, because you see in this problem, we don't know how much the compound is. We just have a compound. So if we just assume 100 grams, that's going to be the easiest way to solve this problem. If we assume 100 grams, then we have 25.9 grams of nitrogen and 1.85 grams of oxygen. So it's, it's pretty, or 1.85 moles. Excuse me, what we have to do with that, once we know 25.9 grams, oops, 25.9 grams of nitrogen, I'm going to convert that to moles. Grams of nitrogen to moles of nitrogen. And that's what work I did above. above. One mole is 14 grams. We're going to end up with 1.85 moles. Now, there's a reason why we need to go to moles is because that's how you compare one element to another. You can't do it in mass because different elements will weigh different things. The oxygen, then we convert that to moles. Now, here's the step that people tend to get stuck on. Once we have converted both of these to moles, what we're going to end up with is the, uh, the mole ratio. So if I divide both of these by the smallest number of moles, 1.85, by both, okay, we're going to end up with a ratio of elements. Okay, so 1.85 divided by itself is 1, and 4.63 divided by 1.85 is 2.5. What this is saying is that we have, for every one nitrogen, we have two and a half oxygens. Well, we can't have two and a half oxygens, so we're going to have to double everything. 
That'll only have to double if we see this 0.5 thing. So if we double both, then we end up with a nice whole number ratio of N2. That's its simplest formula. That's the empirical formula for a compound that's 25.9% nitrogen and 74.1% oxygen. Now, a molecular formula is the next step. We need to know the empirical formula first. And here's what an example of that would look like. Okay, so the molecular formula is what we're trying to find. The empirical formula is given for us. Okay, this is actually a really simple problem. They tell us that the molar mass is 60.6. This means that the molecular formula mass is 60.6. If we add up the empirical formula, we have one carbon, four hydrogens, one nitrogen. This is 12, this is 1, this is 14. So that's going to be 12 plus 4 is 16 plus another 14. Okay, so that's going to be 30 grams. The empirical formula weighs 30, but the molecular formula weighs 60.6. So comparing those two, we see that the molecular formula is twice as big as the empirical formula right here. So I just multiply both of these, uh, this empirical formula by 2, C2, H8, and 2. Again, I did that because my empirical formula weighed half of the molecular formula. So the molecular formula is twice as big. Sometimes you will find it's not uh, any different. That means its empirical and molecular formula are the same. So if we see a compound in this example here, if we see that the compound is 8.2 grams of magnesium combined with 5.40 grams of oxygen, I need to figure out what the empirical formula is first, and then we can go to molecular formula from that. So uh, again, we add up 8.20 plus 5.40, and I end up with 13.6. This is the same problem we did before. Okay, so 13.6 divide 8.20 by 13.60. Okay, so I'm going to get a percent off of that. Okay, so that's just how you find the empirical formula of something. Um, and then what we can do is add it up uh, and figure out our empirical from that. Now, in this last problem with molecular formula, we see that it is 81.8% carbon, 18.2% hydrogen. The molar mass, remember, this is the molecular formula mass is 88 grams. So if I say we have 81.8 grams of carbon, 18.2 grams of hydrogen, okay? So we're going to convert from grams to moles. One mole is 12 grams. One mole of hydrogen is one gram. Okay, so that's going to be 18.2 moles of hydrogen. And 81.8, I forget what we said that that was. So I'll grab my calculator here, 81.8 divided by 12. That will give us 6.82 moles of carbon. Now, I do that tricky step where we have to remember, oh, okay, we divide by the smallest number of moles. That will give us a ratio of 1, and then I divide 6.82 by 18.2. Okay, so 18.2 divided by uh, 6.8, I'm going to get an answer of roughly 2.7, so we'll call that 3. So, I see that my empirical formula is CH3. Now, my molecular formula weighs 88 grams. Okay, this is going to be, what, 15 grams total. Okay, so 88 divided by 15 gives me a ratio of roughly 6. Okay, so 88 grams, this, this is going to be roughly 6 times bigger than the empirical formula. So I multiply this all by 6, and C6H18. That is my molecular formula. That's as hard as it gets with molecular formula. Just remember you find empirical formula first, and then you figure out how much that weighs compared to the molecular formula. And that's it. That's all you have to do for figuring out the difference between empirical and molecular formulas.